Cob of corn. It's anchovies. And the WNBA. Thank you, everyone. Uh, here is the 86th episode of the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We had some technical difficulties, so please bear with us through this episode and enjoy. Welcome to another episode of Velocity Chaos. Coming to you at the speed of sound, we are on the air at the Hexapod Sound House in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Nick, and I'm here for the 86th episode of the Velocity Chaos Podcast. Welcome, 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 and a big welcome to my incredible co-host, Luke. Hey, guys out there in the world, and ladies, and anything in between, uh, you know, if, if you're going from one side to another and coming back, that's fine. That's, we, we allow that here. I just want to introduce everyone out there to DJ Back and Forth. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me out today. Oh, thanks for being here, Nick. What do we got going on today? Today we have a tight show. We are we're going to do some master debaters, get up on our uh, soapboxes and uh, shout and scream a little bit. We got a big segment of Buzzkill in the middle of the show and finally a base on the true story. I uh, took a little break from that because of a pretty large day, D&D campaign on the air, uh, but we're back to it now on our regularly scheduled Based on True Story. Uh, just a reminder out there for our returning listeners and a note to our new friends, here at the Velocity Cast Podcast we explore the highest heights of human knowledge and the lowest depths of crude humor. Our mission is to tickle that pink thing between your ears, poke that frontal lobe, or sometimes just smash the laugh box. So, hop in and buckle up for an infotainment ride across the airwaves. But before we get into all of that, just a reminder to follow us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod and on Facebook. Also, drop us some stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, your podcast platform of choice, or on the YouTube. Give us a sub on there. Comment something from the episode that you've seen, you heard, you want to know more about anything that you're going to in your mind back and forth. But thank you guys always for your support. (laughs) Just breathing. (laughs) Uh, We're going to kick off the show with a Make the Connection. This is a warm-up that uh, Luke and I do every week. Uh, Join along with us. It's a word association game. Essentially, we got to get from one word to another word in a predetermined amount of moves that are going to be provided to us by DJ Back and Forth. So he's going to roll some dice. Oh, yeah. And uh, essentially from there, we'll have to just make the connection. Join in at home. Join in uh, wherever you are, in your car, in the library, whatever. Um, We have some listeners who are getting quite good at this and shaming us with how good they are at it and how uh, terrible we are at it. So... But hey, it gets the it gets the the muscles limber and the brain. We've been hot. I don't think we've missed in the last we've never 50. Missed. We've never yeah. missed. Go ahead. Never missed. Not let's once. let's see what our turns are. Let's see what the magic D sixes tell us here, fellas. Ooh. Broke the streak. We got a six. And a six! Oh man! Yeah. Woo! Almost some devil numbers. It's about time you guys you guys wrap the numbers up here, so we got plenty of room. Dang, son. Well, fellas, I'd like you to make the connection between puppies and psychics. I feel like we got a, we got a whole play day here. <laughs> <laughs> a play date. This we is gonna got, take forever. We got a whole playground. <laughs> we got a whole uh, whole. Um, we got a lot of lot lot to get there. We got a lot of words we gotta say. say. A lot of of chances. So, so twelve moves, uh, starting with puppies, not counting puppies. I'm gonna toss it to Luke, and then Mm -hmm. we're gonna go. Does it count if we end early? If we get there earlier? I don't think so. I think think the the game game is to get there. All right, on the dot. It's a puzzle. It's a piece. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, Luke, puppies, adorable, babies, Uh, adorable. Um. What else is adorable? Wives. Wives. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now me. what? Now what? Now what? Now what? Uh, Let's see what happens. Fruitful. <laughs> You're boxing yourself into a corner. Fruitful. Um, multiplication. Multiplication. Ooh, I like that. Um, product. 
selling, convincing, paying, paying, um, we got two more, <laughs> paying, um, future, psychic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna get so far that you couldn't you couldn't get out of it. Like, oh no! Yeah, we we out of essentially burned the first four. Yeah. Yeah. We really only need eight. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. We got that. Puppies are psychics. I mean, puppies are psychics. They know exactly what you're feeling and yeah, what they got and how to manipulate you into getting what they want. Trust me, I know this from experience. We all do. Uh, so that's it. We're moving into our first segment, Master Debaters. This is where Luke and I get on our soapboxes, yell and scream at each other a little bit. Um, today we are uh, debating a very important topic that is the key to both of our platforms in the upcoming elections. So, uh, and it is going to be posed by none other than uh, Walter Kronk back and forth. It's <laughs> <laughs> Kronk. Kronk back and forth. Oh. Walter Kronk back and forth. All right, fellas. I've been I've been having a this is a tough one for both of our delegates here, but I think it'll really determine your character now. I would like to know, for the rest of your life, would you rather have to be, would you rather be very allergic to your favorite food and have to eat it once a week, or be forced to eat the one food that you hate the most Ugh. once a week okay. for the rest of your life? Sorry, just typing. <laughs> okay, that means to me that, that makes total sense of... Uh, how, to, how to go about this one is uh, obviously I would choose my favorite food once a week, but I'd be you know allergic to it. I, I would take that. I would take that bullet in a heartbeat than to have to guzzle down to gag down the gross food uh, once a week. I would. Uh, I mean, Benadryl would probably be uh, so proud to have me as their number one customer first and foremost, but to also to be able to, it's not, food not only is nutritious, delicious, but it's, it's full of memories and full of, full of joy is what it truly do, does bring you. So having the ability to still uh, have your favorite food, even though it's, it's, it's uh, even though, you know, it, it's going to be a little bad, it's not going to be bad for long, you know, because you get to have it again next week. As you can see, my opponent is quite indulgent and uh, prefers to uh, take what they can get, take what they want. I think option B is definitely the, the option to go with here, uh, Walter, uh, because essentially you can learn to love something. As terrible as anchovies are, I think I could learn to love them. And just like you out there, if you're on the other side of the aisle, if you're, if you're an indulger like my opponent here, Luke, uh, and, and you, you're going to vote for him. When you lose this election, and I'm, I'm in there, you're going to learn to love me. Even though you hate me right now. Even though I'm your anchovy, you're going to learn to love me. And so that's why I, posi I, I, I position myself with uh, option B here. I'd rather uh, you know, take my medicine and uh, eat that least favorite food once a week. And uh, you know, that, that'll be that. You see, the thing, the thing with your least favorite food... And you're saying that you can learn to love it. Uh, that means, in this scenario, your least favorite food is going to change. So it's always going to be your least favorite food that you have to eat. It doesn't necessarily have to be anchovies. It just says, my favorite food might not always be the same, and I will develop new allergies <laughs> to, these, to these delicious foods as I build up immunities to these al allergenic foods that I probably no longer enjoy to their full capacity. But, uh... The, the thing with just delving into your Dionysus side every once in a while, once a week, okay? You have your cheat day once a week. I don't think that's such a bad thing, everybody. You know, when you just get to have what you want and take it by the crust and shove it in your mouth, that, that is what America is about. And if you, say, if you say anything other than that, I don't think, I think you're against America. I understand, but to me this is like a kind of elitist kind of philosophy for a white ivory tower day, you know, modern America. I want to go to our roots, where America was founded on hard work and doing things you didn't want to do, like eating your least favorite food once a week. Builds character, makes someone strong, 
makes us all on the same playing field because we've been through the shitter together, you know? And so, hey, we've all been there. You're growing up. Your mom wants you to eat your peas at the dinner table. You don't like it. You don't want it. Throw them in her face. She still shoves them down your throat. We've all been there. It's all happened to us, right? You can relate to that. So what I'm saying is, it's just us. Moving through life, building character, becoming stronger. So as far as America's concerned, it's, as far as the America I want to live in, that's it right there. That one where you got to eat your least favorite food once a week. you got to just stomach it. I... I applaud, I applaud you. I applaud you for this, for this delusion that you're uh, laying upon us um, of, of how, how this country was built on, you know, people having to do the hard work. We've been through that. We've already, we've already stomached that as a people. And their, their toughness and their grit has allowed us to, to graze greener pastures, to, to, to drink from the more bountiful trees of fruit, and their juices, we we have been given this opportunity to to be buck wild in life and enjoy in the pleasures that are out there. And we have the technology in science and medicine to counteract. We don't we're, we don't live in a life of preventing illnesses. We live in a life that that has a has a, I don't know, band-aids for them. You know, you just cover them up, and that's what we are okay with doing, and that's what we know, and that's what we love as a people. I see where you're going with all of this, but I, I, I just, most of the time, the food that tastes good, you said that Diana, the Dionysus complex, you know, where you're just indulging. I mean, come on, that's all just sugars and fats and cholesterol and things you don't need. The food that doesn't taste good is the food that nourishes your body and your bones. The stuff that's not good, you know, not good for you, it tastes the best. So a little, a little sacrifice now will go a long way to our future as a country. And uh, I just think you got to follow, follow my habits, you know, eat that, eat that meal a week that you don't like, you know, got to be reminded of where we've come from and where we don't want to return to. And uh, those sardines, you know, that, that's a reminder. That's going to be a reminder because when I'm president and I commit to this as a policy, that I will eat this every week in front of you on live stream TV just to prove my character and worth to you as citizens. We'll all remember the sacrifice that our forefathers bore for this country. Listen, listen to Nick right now. He's, he's telling you, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you your least favorite thing to eat once a week and it's going to make you better. How is that going to make you better? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be out here giving you your most favorite thing. And it might, it, you might feel a little, your tummy might hurt because, you know, you're allergic to it. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the cure for it immediately right after so you don't feel those pains. I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars a week with that too. I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a place to stay. There's going to be a chicken in every pot, even if you're allergic to it. That's right. There's going to be so much for everyone to have. They're not going to have time to complain about uh, how they feel because they're going to be so abundant in in just joy uh, with all the, all the goodness that they, they're going to be enjoying. Uh, abundance sounds great. I, I, I'm not going to lie. You know, we all indulge every once in a while. But it's, it's about determination. And it's about us coming together as people in common suffering. There's people out there that are suffering from ailments that we have no idea about. Uh, and this might help us relate a little more if we're all eating the food that we hate. Um, but, you know, I, I'm a man that doesn't want to mince words, so I'm actually just going to stop talking and contemplate on this. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. If you, if you want to gobble down your bull balls once a week, that's fine. <laughs> uh, DJ, Walter, back and forth. I don't know, I think we're in a standstill here. <laughs> well, gentlemen, gentlemen, I want to know, I, I, you know, you guys talk about, you know, you two wealthy politicians and you guys can afford to eat the foods that you don't like and the foods that you do like. What about what about the people that need to get their bowls of balls delivered? <laughs> that, 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 that may not may or may not have access to them, but have to get these because they have to eat it once a week. If that's their favorite food, I will make it happen. I, I, I believe in infrastructure as well. I can I can agree with my opponent on yes. this front that uh, infrastructure for, for goods, whether allergic, non-allergic, 
like, love, hate, take it up the butter in the mouth. You know, we'll we'll make sure that infrastructure is right there. And that's that's something that we both agree on. We both no agree. No matter on who you choose, we both agree we on. We both this. agree on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, speaking of all this food, guys, uh, I don't care what you're eating. Sometimes it just gives you that gas, and uh, you got to be careful of that. And speaking of gas, have you ever been on a crowded elevator? You know the one where you're with a potential new business partner heading up to the corner office. Or you made eye contact with that hottie in the back while stepping in and you just let one slip. Or how about if you're cutting a rug at that crowded house party where you're just the center of the celebratory universe. Everyone loves you and you just can't keep the sphincter taut. Well, we've all been there, so we all need Gasway in our pockets. Gasway is an all-factory salvation and a small chapstick-sized canister that can easily stow on your person. If you get yourself in a situation that just stinks, Pull the pin on the gasway, and instead of last night's chimichangas, your friends, colleagues, and local hotties will be smelling lovely lilac, summer spice, or autumnal aroma filling your personal bubble. If you're like me and need a bowel movement bailout, head over to gasway.com and use the code VCAIRBISCUIT at checkout to get a BOGO Bonanza of canisters. Just get a, uh, never get busted again for breaking wind. This is not an actual product service idea, just in case you thought it was. It's not. If there's something out there with the same name, we're unaware and have no affiliation. Offer no judgment on the actual product service or idea. Boom. Jimmy Chong is coming. And uh, <laughs> before we get into the buzzkill, because uh, we did that little uh, ad break here about gassiness after you eat your favorite food, I uh, just want to check in with Walter back and forth real quick. What do, what do you think? Uh, what, do, what do you choose after that uh, heated debate? I think... I think I'm a weak man, and that America is a beautiful place, and there probably is, probably is a solution to every problem. And the solution to my problem would be eating my favorite food and being deathly allergic every single time. I mean, you know, you know, Nick makes a compelling argument, and I love, I love the romance of of America and what it could be and what it could stand for, but. I think it's time for all of us to step up and accept the reality that we will just take antibiotics every time we have our have our pizza. Well, when you got socialists out there trying to get free health of course they're going to choose to go to the hospital after you eat your freaking cheese pizza. Fat <laughs> boy. We are a weak people, okay? <laughs> I'm ugly, man. We're talking about food here. <laughs> I'm weak. We are weak. No, we're, all, we're all fit. If you couldn't tell from our sultry voices, yeah. we're all... Specimens of, of health. <laughs> True, I agree with Nick though. I'd like, uh, probably choke it down. <laughs> I don't want to feel itchy. Uh, all right, that's going to take us into our buzzkill segment that we do every few episodes where DJ back and forth uh, throws Nick and I a few topics uh, randomly generated from him, his peers, from the interwebs, and we will talk about them from uh, for about either, uh, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to uh, maybe uh, two, three minutes at a time. It's a random buzzer that will cut us off, and I will let DJ back and forth explain the rest. All right, gentlemen, you know the rules and hit you with the random subject, and every time you hear the... It's time to move on. So let's turn to the monolist here, boys. The monolist. Your subject today is the Pope. Ooh. Which one are we on? Pope John Paul II. Yeah. Is not him. Pope Benedict the third. Right. Pope. I can't keep track. Papal. When are we gonna get into the popes that are like Pope Johnny? Pope <laughs> Real cool. Pope Rascal. Pope Pope Luke. Well, I don't know. I get that one. Oh, we're on Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Pope Francis. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Benedict the sixteenth. Uh, he got he, he Pope got Ronald. Died. Yeah, Pope Ron. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Pope Ronald McDonald. Pope. Uh, there hasn't ever been an American Pope, uh, and I know that's uh, yeah. what that show is about. Uh, the young Pope or something like that. We've but, only been around for two hundred years. Yeah, I guess we're not old enough. We're at the back of the line. We're at the back. Of the line. <laughs> we're not even in the raffle too, yet. <laughs> too many Protestants. Uh. Too many Protestants. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, get out of here. I wonder. We gotta look that up. What country? Donate what Who goes to the most? Catholic Church. Which oh. which is the wealthiest? Where what country has the wealthiest segment of the Catholic Church? But uh, yeah, Pope uh, Pope Billy, Pope uh, Pope Pascal. <laughs> this I, I get this Pope uh, for Francis. I don't know why every time I hear the name Francis, I go Francis. Um, he's been he's been pretty progressive in, yeah. in a lot of his stuff. And, uh, you know, 
know, he's, uh, he's, he's changing, changing things up with people. You know, he used to say, uh, peace be with you, but now you say, peace be with I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a church goer. Reese's Pieces. Reese's yeah. Pieces. With you. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Deuces. Dude, I got next mass, the Halloween mass. It's going to be like a sign of, like, a sign, uh, sign of peace to everyone. I'm just going to like toss Reese's Pieces. Like, <laughs> Pieces to everybody. Pieces be with you. <laughs> pieces to everyone. And you get some pieces. Yeah, you get some pieces. Your subject is marching bands. Uh, when I was um, a young boy, my father, he, uh, he took me in, into the city <laughs> to see a marching band. And he said, son, one day uh, when you grow up, you'll be... The Something about the leader of the Woken, the Spoken, and the leader of the Damned, something like that. <laughs> oh, that got dark. Yeah, I forgot. Was what your he dad said. okay? You I was. was all right. I okay. mean, what yeah. happened to your dad after that? It was a St. Patrick's Day, so I was throwing it <laughs> back to you. <laughs> Uh, he was my designated driver, you know. That's what happens when you take a six-year-old to a parade. That sounds like a cool, <laughs> a cool uh, marching band, though. Damn. Uh, yeah. Um, Who's the best land band in the land? Ohio State. That's what they say. That's, yeah, just their own branding. They were first to market. Now here, that's the one thing I think is really missing for professional football and other sports is a live band element. Professional marching band. I mean, if you if you're on a football field and just a section of the stadium had like a stage that just had like a, a house band. Yeah, and during TV breaks was just like the roots on uh, yeah. Yeah. Night, you know. Yeah, it's just like bop, 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 bop. like that'd be sweet. So really, college is that for you? Though. Your subject is opera. Uh, uh, one so when I was a young boy, <laughs> my father <laughs> took me into the city to see the opera, and he said, "Dude, check this out." <laughs> and so when we watched the opera, and they were just singing, and they were like Vikings, and no, I've never seen the opera people. It's, you know, I think it's getting a little thin, you know, like kind of, the opera is getting a little ghostly, almost phantom-like, you know? Yeah. I would say. Well, all these theaters are, uh, you know, they, they seem very... Theatres. Theatres seem very, uh, yeah, spooky in a way. They're, they have a, they have an aura about them. Um, and and you know what though the, the the theater will carry on, it'll carry on, <laughs> and though you're dead, and it might be gone. Believe me, your memory that memory will carry on, and uh, it'll carry on. And in a, in in my heart for sure, I can't contain it. The anthem won't explain it, but the opera will be here. <laughs> your subject, your subject, your subject is teenage mutant and. Calabunga, Calabunga dude. dude. That's my favorite. I, this is the yeah, weirdest thing. Yeah. Okay, my favorite part of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is just like how cheesy the pizza is. All oh, right. In everything, the cheese. He's like, <laughs> yeah, like Leo is like doing a freaking flip on like Michelangelo's on a skateboard, yeah. and the the pizza cheese is like a mile long from yeah. where he picked it up. But it's just. Oh yeah, give me some of that pizza. How about that? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the truest life lesson that I learned from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is never pay full price for a late pizza. Nice. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You gotta do that. Deep one. I think Mine that, was yeah. don't pick fights with people named Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pretty tough and has don't knives on his hands. To, don't listen to rats who are trying to tell you they're your father. <laughs> hey, you know. Well, we, go through, we all go through grind pants. Yeah. Uh, I think Ninja Turtles were some of my biggest ins- Damn. <laughs> Oh, wait, there's a reset now. <laughs> Your father's a rat! <laughs> yeah, he is. I think he is something. <laughs> Your subject is politicians. Slime. If I were to debate about anything, it'd be about food allergies. Because, yeah. I mean, come on, that's an unsung like, problem in America, yeah. right? How many imagine, have them? imagine if you had to eat it every single week, like your favorite food. Yeah. Imagine. That, I, I mean, I'd probably do that. Yeah, or some people in this country have to eat the food they don't want to eat at least once a week. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tell my wife, let's just cut it down to ramen and beans. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> How much money do you think you'd actually save if you did that? Uh, a boatload. However much I spend on Chipotle. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how uh, I was thinking about this the other day. 
remember that one hypothetical life we did where you had to start over mm -hmm. completely? And just how rigged our society is to just get you to spend. You know, yeah. you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do that. And you're just like, if I could really just cut it out and just get my, you know, nutrition for the day, mm -hmm. what I choose to do it, and then maybe once a week have like a super meal that is, you know, me splurging. I don't know. It's, yeah. It's wild. These politicians, though, so, you know, they're not going to do that for us. They're not going to do that for us. Yeah. Their pockets are getting lined by big pharma and all these other uh, people. Lobbies. And all these lobbyists and these companies. And they, they don't have everyone's interest. They have only their pockets' interest in mind. Lobbyists. I hate it. The politicians are, uh, they're driving us into the ground. Yeah. And, and they're, they're driving the wedge in between, uh, Nick and I with, with their questions about allergies and food. And <laughs> Your subject is Las Vegas. Big city. Big city nights. <laughs> it's been, I haven't been to Vegas in a while, but I'd like to go back and, uh, just cut loose a little bit. Just, just rip it up. Lots of cast podcast from the strip. Just skateboard down, rip it up. Yeah, I, I will say this though. I mean, I would, I would have liked to go to Las Vegas in like the heyday, kind of like in the in the early days when like, the mob owned it. Yeah, exactly. Now it's just it's so efficient at taking people's money. Yeah. Back then they were kind of figuring it out, right? And mm. so there were loopholes. You could get lucky, or you know, like somebody could figure out how to um, be a part of the Las Vegas world. But now I feel like if you're not in, you're either on one side. Yeah. The, money, the side getting the money or the side losing the money. I heard you could get a T-bone steak for a quarter back in the day. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I wanted to be. There. Right? <laughs> oh, DJ back and forth, I want to hit something. <laughs> so, I can get a great look at a T-bone steak by sticking my head up a cow's ass, but I don't think it's much work for it. <laughs> Just, uh, it's a place of uh, a place of vanity. It's a place that your favorite food, even though you're allergic to it. Yeah. Las Vegas. <laughs> your subject is the WNBA. <laughs> Got anything else? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's really good. Um, <laughs> um, no, I think I'm excited to see. Okay, so the way I look at it is I. All of the major leagues that we are kind of accept are accustomed mm -hmm. to have already existed for a long time, yeah. well beyond before the time I was here. So it actually would be cool to see a league come to fruition where people are becoming televised stars and rock stars and that level of promotion while I'm alive. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm here for it. I mean, I, the problem is access again. Like right now, everybody can watch every football game pretty much for free if you have an antenna. Yeah. Now yeah, local. You gotta. It, so it it can be hard to access it if you're not. I guess you're just gonna have to pay for you know the WNBA network or something. Well, that's but the thing. It's maybe streaming will help it usher yeah. it in. I don't know. That's like if they want to, then it's like then they'll have to take revenue from NFL and put it towards you know W or female yeah. football or uh, you know uh, NBA. Sorry, I don't I don't know why I went with football. NBA and yeah. take it to WNBA. Because if you're paying just the crew alone, as far as like cameras go, like sure, and, and you're not pulling in the audience, yeah, it's like you're you're just you're playing at a loss. Yeah, but I mean, I think everybody. I think the thing was maybe they want like the equal pay thing is like a big issue. Uh, they definitely deserve it at a certain point, but even at the early days of like the NFL, those guys were playing football in the fall and then would work for five months. Yeah. And then come back to play football in the fall. Like the million dollar contracts didn't just come out of nowhere. You know? Yeah. I mean, it was a business that had to be built, an empire that had to be created. And back in the day, there were so many different leagues, right? Yeah. They're lucky because they have one United League right now to start with, but they want the payment quickly. But like the the empire is building, it's growing. So if, are they getting out there and you know doing? press conferences or uh, doing advertisement uh, they need to get some, people. They need some personalities. Is what yeah. They need. And I'm sure they do, but like we need to get some personalities getting to everybody. Like, yeah. oh man, she's awesome. I think she's cool. Like Ronda Rousey, I know who Ronda Rousey oh, is yeah. from fighting, but she's been out there doing it. They need that for the WNBA, like a Jordan yep. or a Crane. No, 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 here we go. This is what they need. They just need to start getting into fights 
Did you see that WNBA fight yeah, between the uh, the Sparks and the other team? And, yeah. And then they just keep getting into fights, and then it just becomes the, the wrestling they national need, basketball. Yeah. They need heels, is what they need. They yeah. need heels and, and chin. What is it called? Heels and faces. Heels they and need, faces. We, we need some of that, and you can't really coach that. You gotta just find them and then keep them around. Get the eyes on the product. Who's the crazy then, guy in the Bulls with the wild hair? Dennis Rodman. Dennis, they need a Dennis Rodman. Yeah. They, uh, you know, a female. I think um, version of him. Who? Who? Uh, uh, what's that one for the shows? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, where the guy plays the the girl basketball player. Uh, oh. <laughs> do you wanna? Do you wanna man? <laughs> uh, I don't even. I don't even know what you're talking about. Denise Rodman. Yeah, I think it was a Joanna man. <laughs> <laughs> Your subject is the 90s. Joanna man came out after the 90s. <laughs> uh, dude, the 90s. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff came out of the That's 90s. When I grew up, that was. That was a I think of my life. I'm looking forward to the day when the 90s and the new 80s. You know, where it's like, hey man, let's go find those weird things that made the 90s nostalgic. Tamagotchis. Yeah, Tamagotchis, Furbies. <laughs> Furbies, Furbies, Beanie Babies. Beanie babies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Forget the nineties. Yeah. Um, Light up shoes. Yeah, or what were they called? The ones with the wheel and the heel. Heelys. Heelys. Yeah. What is? So it's still hot. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pair coming in right I, now. I would definitely wear those if you're on like a set and you're just like rolling up to an important meeting. And you're just like, you do the quick step, quick, yeah. quick, quick. quick. <laughs> What's up, guys? So smooth. Sup, coffee. Spill it. <laughs> You're burning my face! Um, dude, Nickelodeon. Like Nickelodeon. Slime Time 9. Yeah. The 90s was the last era before the digital world t- took over. You know, so... Yep. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, 20 years from now, empirical data and, and psychology journals publishing about that crossover because it was a huge, momentous event. Uh, the internet becoming more prevalent. And... Our generation is kind of the last one that was more exclusive uh, to not having all that. Your subject is the Crocodile Hunter. Oh, crikey. Just a man, not a hero. Just a boy who had to sing this song. (laughs) Just a man. He wasn't a hero. I don't care. Go ahead. Whatever. Somebody will get that. (laughs) Good old Steve Irwin. Father of um, the other Irwins, Bindi, Robert. Okay, come on, come on, man. You gotta get more energy than that. The Crocodile Hunter was the man. He was, next to my grandfather, the biggest male impression on my life. Oh. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sell me on Sorry. it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Running around outside. Yeah. Can I tag out with you, Luke? <laughs> yeah, getting, dirty, getting dirty. Getting uh-huh. dirty. Wrestling gators. Yep. Being fearless, living for the planet, come on. Like, I mean, a lot of the common core of who I am was embodied by Steve Irwin. Enthusiasm for everything. That's true. I mean, imagine being his kid and being his family. Like, that guy was probably a ball of life and just, like, that. Would, that's kind of who I would want to be. I should want to be him more lately. How many crocodiles did he have to kill before he got on a TV for <laughs> his name Crocodile Hunter? And then he's like, all right, I don't have to kill him anymore. You can hunt things and not kill him. Oh. Is that... Oh, I thought hunting was, you know... Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I no, it. he's... No, he, uh, Steve Irwin is incredible. The crocodile oh, hunt, the crocodile capturer. There we go. See, that yeah. doesn't have the same no. rank. <laughs> Can't put that on an Animal Planet ad. No, dude. Steve Irwin, man. Top yeah. dog. Yeah, like you said. The, the, the vigor in which he lived life with and the passion that he put out to people just... Just to get that the word out there about these animals and the nature, and because it wasn't just crocodiles, it was you know snakes and Komodo fruit, dragons. Dra- yeah, dragons. You remember that spiders. episode where he climbs up in the tree, the Komodo dragon bit onto his boot. Oh, Jesus. and he's like climbing up the tree, finally gets it free, and then he takes his shoe off. The cameraman's like in the tree with him, and he's like, "Keep rolling, we're doing the show." He's like showing him like the holes in his leather boot, and he's oh, just like. My God. Oh, crikey! Look at the house in his boot! And he's just like, you know, looking at... I mean, dude, the man... Oh, I want to react to stuff like that. If you can react to being chased by a Komodo dragon like that, yeah. you can just, you can react to anything in life. Just staying on. He probably got stabbed by the stingray and was just like, damn! Yeah, this is where Look at how accurate that stingray is! Yeah. <laughs> just, 
Beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> Your subject is Egyptian pharaohs. What about them? <laughs> Man. They get buried in toilet paper and Losers. in a box. Losers. Losers. Can't even shape the coffin the right way, you know? It's a, just a giant... I know, yours would have a, a bigger mound in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <to> figure. <laughs> I mean, dude, the, we all call them pharaohs, but they're just aliens. Probably. You know, this from from our pyramid segment. Extensive I mean, research. Extensive research. Pyramidology would yep. state that Tutankhamun, Tutankhamun was just an alien amongst us. Just an alien coming down with a nice goatee. I do like uh, the death mask. Uh, you know, that's where it kind of all originated from. Yeah. The, the sarcophagus, though, how extravagant. Right. How, what a, what a, what a play. What a just a total I am the man kind of scenario. Just, Casting plagues. Well, just like rivers in the blood. <laughs> just like I want you to bury me not in one coffin, as we all know, which is very expensive. Mm -hmm. I want you to bury me in ten coffins, hey. one inside another. <laughs> it's all Russian doll situation Russian of doll coffins. Doll. If I was a if I was a pharaoh, yep. I would just create uh, like a sarcophagus, and then like in the middle, just like a profanity stricken like no and then it's just like knowing someday down the line somebody's gonna open this and be like trying to decode it <laughs> it just says like you suck <laughs> dang that one stings tough rules you suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, what what it's just you kind of something? no I, don't, I actually don't have anything you're just laughing yeah I'm just, I'm just wow. jiggling little boy <laughs> your subject is bull riding Yeehaw. Crazy sons of bitches. I could never. That's one of the. I've been. I've been starting to understand my mortality a little more. Your dad's gonna be like, son. I know you. You gobbled down the bull balls. Now you gotta. <laughs> you gotta gobble on the, the bull's back. Now you gotta. Take, now you gotta take the bull's skull to your face. Yeah. That is the craziest part. Those dudes who wear the masks. I get it. Cause I've. You watch them on TV. Those guys where. They get rocked forward, and that bull comes up, and it's just essentially a cinder block right to the head. What do they get from this? Is this just machismo? Is a lot of Bud Light <laughs> sponsorships. A lot of Bud Light. <laughs> What's the viewership to uh, bull riding compared to WNBA? Like, what, where are we drawing the line here? Like, what, uh, how equal is that? I, would, I don't know. Viewership? People come for the bulls. People come for the bulls. They stay for the balls. They stay for the balls. <laughs> um... I would just love to see like an R rated announcer on, on bull riding. <laughs> you see the power of this guy? This guy's gonna rock this young guy's world. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't stand a chance. He is going to get tossed. Get bucked. <laughs> I'm glad that we could end on that bright and shining moment. Just like light. Light offers levels of unimaginable illumination. <laughs> Say that five times fast. No, don't! Because that will activate Light's self-destruct sequence, and unless you're in dire need of a distraction, don't say Light offers levels of unimaginable illumination five times, because if you do say Light offers levels of unimaginable illumination, we all know what would happen, and that's not good. I heard that this one time at the factory where Light is manufactured, a worker said, Light offers levels of unimaginable illumination five times, and my goodness, let's just say some prayers for those who are affected. <clears throat> I haven't even told you about life's, light light's lifetime warranty and other garbage like that. I just got so hung up on telling you not to say light offers levels of unimaginable... <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on, hold on. I see what you guys are trying to do there. Anyway, get light because they paid us to say that. This is not an actual product, service, or idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there is something out there with the same name, we're unaware, have no affiliation, and offer no judgment on the actual product, service, or idea. And here we are to the boats segment. Based on a true story, if you didn't know what boats meant f to the Velocity Chaos podcast, this is where Nick and myself were we're going to pitch uh, DJ producer back and forth over here uh, a movie based on a true story, based on a headline that that we've we've scrounged up, and. Um, DJ back and forth. I mean, sorry, producer back and forth. My, uh, the, you just go back and forth so many yeah. times. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to call you. We've had so many back and forth emails. Yeah. We really appreciate you making some time for yeah. us. Well, I'm glad you guys are back here at the studio anyway. Let's just move forth with the pitch, shall we? Okay. Well, can we just back up for one second here? Um, let me give you the headline before we go forth. Mm. Um, all right. Here we go. Are you ready for the? I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been... This one's been on the cob for a while. So 
we uh, here we go. Meet South Dakota's new corn ambassador, a boy who recently found out that corn is real. Yeah. Based on a true story. This is a really inspiring um, movie. It's going to really work the heartstrings of America. And through and through, this is a little slice of America. Essentially, though, we just we open out in the prairies of uh, middle America on the farmlands. And uh, we just kind of moving through the corn, real visual. It's beautiful out there. And then we fade over to the big city. And we meet little, uh, little Jeremiah. I think it little, should be something different. Little, uh, little, um, Brandon. I think it should be something different. Little, little, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I ran out of names. It's really <laughs> names I know. Sorry, caught me off guard. Um, no, we, we run into Tyrone. We run into the Tyrone, all right? Tyrone is, uh, he's going to school. He's on his way to school. He's grown up in the big city, hasn't left the big city. All he's ever known is concrete, concrete and, uh, concrete and steel baby. And, uh, his mom, his loving mother puts him, is about to put him on the bus. And, uh, she goes, Tyrone. He's like, yeah, he's like, we're moving. He's like, what? She's like, yep, we're moving out to the country. And he's like, I've never been to the country. And, and she's like, wow. Like, you know, this is going to be a great opportunity for you. He's like, but I'm going to miss all my friends. And she's like, don't worry. Like you're going to find, you know, new friends out there. He's like, I'm not going to have anything to do out there. My, you know, no, nope, there's no basketball out there. And she's going to be like, nope, no, nope, you're going to find plenty to do out there. So Tyrone's on the bus and has a rough last day at school. His friends tell him goodbye. And, uh, you know, he heads out with his family and pack up the Winnebago and, and they drive on out over the, over the bridges through the Ohio Valley out to South Dakota. And that's where they go. Tyrone, you know, he's seeing, seen a lot of, a lot of new things that he hasn't seen before, you know, just, just cruising across the country, across I, I 90 and, um, you know, sees, sees new buildings, new cities, but he sees a lot of land, a lot of land out there that he's seeing for the first time. He's seeing, you know, soy crops, he's seeing, uh, wheat crops and stuff. And, Occasionally sees a you know some corn stalks. So like, huh, what are, I wonder what those things are. Uh, and you know, fast forward after this little little you know little quick trip as, as they you know we'll, we'll get we'll push sure. all that stuff. But this is just you know discovery for him. You kind of see you know he's he's upset, but he's also you know, he's a curious. Tyrone's curious, and um, so they get uh, they get to where they're living in South Dakota on the prairie, and uh, it should be somewhere different. <laughs> they're. Uh, he so he gets out. Uh, actually, is is just this deep valley in uh, in the middle, in the middle of South Dakota. <laughs> it's like <laughs> somewhere different. Up on the mountain, there's this there's this tall plateau where they're driving up there with the Winnebago, and there's just this high plateau uh, where their house is, and it's just it's just one of the most amazing views that you'll ever see of the the great America. Yeah, and um. But one thing that he does see that leading up to this this big plateau that they live on is just corn for days, maize for days, maize for days. Um, miles even, even kilometers, if you will. Um, and you know he stops and uh, when they when they pull up, and uh, his his father takes him you know to the edge. Um, he's like Tyrone, come here. Before we go in, um, I just want you to look across all of this. Because everything that the light touches is yours. Yeah. It's going to, you know. And and so, um, you know, that's like the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes of the film. And, uh, but then, um, you know, the one day, it's the weekend, the first weekend there, Tyrone's out with his dad and uh, his uncle comes rolling into town. And essentially, like, his uncle's like a no good dude, right? And, um they're out in the cornfields and uh, the uncle's like, I need money. He's like talking to his brother and you know, the dad's like, you know, I can't keep fueling this fire that's in you, you know, brother Benjamin and things get heated and there's a big scene and brother Benjamin pushes Tyrone's dad in the way of the, of this giant corn hauler. Like, and, and like, he's trapped. He's like, gets stuck on a scarecrow or something like that. And Tyrone's trying to help him. And, uh, you know, the brother's like, you got to run, you got to run Tyrone. He said something different. 
you got to get out of here, Tyrone. Look, this accident is too big for you. He's like, you got to run. And uh, so he, um, Tyrone just like freaks out. He has this crazy out of body experience moment and he just, he runs, he runs away. He runs away from the kingdom of corn and uh, essentially like becomes just like a wayward, a wayward child and, and, and ends up, you know, more in the deep South, kind of in a deserty area and all hope is lost. He's kind of, you know, hitchhiking his way around and um, yeah. And then he just, he meets two other young hitchhikers, tall, skinny one, and short, fat one. It should be something different. Uh, tall, fat one and short, skinny one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, they uh, befriend Tyrone and uh, they, they're they really good musicians. They're just like, you know, traveling little. They should be something minsters. different. Um, they, uh, they're botanists or uh, they are uh, people who study um, agriculture. It should be something different. Um <laughs> Hang on, I got some. No, I, I got some. They are, they are uh, entomologists, and uh, they're experts who study bugs. Okay, and so they take him under their wing, and uh, they become. He becomes like a expert hobo, and uh, grows up to be an expert hobo. Yeah, and so so we have uh, Zeke, the tall one, obviously, and then and, uh, and, and uh, Pewter, the short one. <laughs> So Zeke and Pewter and, and Tyrone, you know, they're they're going to land, and um, one day Pewter's like, "Hey man, uh, I heard that that the uh, that there's a wizard somewhere here in the woods, and, and he'll grant us a wish." He should say something different. <laughs> he said, "Hey man, I heard I heard that." Oh, if if we go back and we we could go back behind this shop here and we steal some gasoline, I see a couple of hogs out there that we can we can make this this hitchhiking a lot more easier. So you know, Tyrone uh, and Zeke and Pewter they they set up this this operation and uh, <laughs> the to you know to get a get a uh, can of gasoline so that they can uh, they can you know, get this motorbike started, a little three wheeler thing with a side cart, you know, pitched. And, yeah. uh, so they can, you know, just ride. And, uh, as, as they're going to do that, you know, they get caught obviously. Yeah. And, um, cause you gotta have, you know, a little bit of, you know, someone, someone to take care of these three wrap scallions. Um, but old, what old man Lancaster. Yeah. Old man Lancaster. And, um, yeah, he's, he's got, he's, He's different. Old man Lancaster is a little different. What are you boys doing here behind my shop? And he, as he looks at him, he looks like a bunch of little hobos trying to steal my stuff. I don't like that. And, you know, he has like a little twinkle in his eye and like kind of like his hair starts standing up and he gets like, you know, big and mean. Uh, it kind of gets getting dark and starts to, you know, starts to rain. <sighs> The only thing I don't like more than three little hobos trying to steal my stuff is no one here to work for me. Why don't you boys come in here? I'm going to teach you some hard work about stomaching the real facets of life. Learn to rough up your hands and get on your hands and knees and, and learn the true value of a dollar here in America. Yeah. And, and so, you know, because they owe them, like, they're like, all right, fine, we'll do that. And, uh, but a couple of years start going by and, uh, you know, they really dig in. They learn a lot about agriculture and, um, you know, uh, Zeke and Pewter, you know, start really applying those bachelor's degrees, those PhDs that they were really just thrown away. You know, these entomologists, these guys are starting to study bugs in the area and help like that little town kind of take care of some of their pest, you know, pest problems and the crops are growing. Everything's good. And, uh, Tyrone kind of grows into a strapping young man and, uh, but is a great farmer and, 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 you know, is like the world's becomes one of the world's best corn growers. And, uh, but then all of a sudden uh, some girl ro rolls into town and, and she's kind of like, you know, new to town. She's there to kind of help with the agriculture stuff. Like she knows old man Lancaster and, uh, but she's like, she feels like she recognized Tyrone. Like she feels like she she knows who he is, and uh, 
one night at like a cool little country fair kind of line dancing party, she, she realizes as they're dancing together up close, kind of little sparks flying. She's like, Tyrone. And he's like, yeah, that's me. And she, it's, uh, it's Alan. <laughs> it's Alan. Her, it's a girl. Her name's Alan. But she's, she's Alan. And, um, it, it, he realizes this is a girl that he met in the little school up in North Dakota before he ran away. And, uh, they, they had a nice little moment there back in the beginning of the film, but now she's here. She recognizes Tyrone and she's like, your mother's been looking for you for all these years. And she gets all mad. She gets, you know, hot. She's a good old country girl. And she's just like, you done your, 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 your mother wrong. And you know, um, Alan's all hot, man. She's, she's upset. And she's like, you gotta go home. He's like, I'm never going home. Like, you couldn't make me go home if, you know, you made me king of the corn. Like, you know, it's like, you said something different. You couldn't make me go home if uh, you made, made me, you know, king of South Dakota. I wouldn't go back. There's no way. Um, and uh, she's like, well, we don't have kings in America, Tyrone, but that's okay. He's like, hey, man, I'm just a corn specialist. I don't know <laughs> shit about politics. And uh, so anyway, she's trying to get him back. And he's just like, no, I'm happy here with Z computer. We're getting shit done. We're having a good time. We're growing corn. Forget about it. You can, Alan, you can go kick rocks. Yeah. Alan, get out of here. Get out of here, Alan. I'm, I'm living my good life here down in uh, where we're at now with, uh, with Lancaster. He's taught us, taught us a good life and I'm a good corn grower. And Alan's like, your mother's sick. And <laughs> ma, ma sick it says, he says, says something different. <laughs> no, my mother is healthy as an ox. I no, said something different. What? What did you do to her? Why? <laughs> he says something different. <laughs> Alan, wh- why do you always gotta rain on my parade here? I'm living my good life, and I'm just, I'm just trying to be the best Tyrone here with my two good friends, Zeke and Pewter. <laughs> and you just come down here. I'm so scared. I'm so scared, Alan. I, I saw my uncle push my daddy in front of a, a corn husker, and I don't know what to do. Oh, pull it together, Luke. Pull it together. I mean, he's he's yeah. really into this. He wrote that monologue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you can tell, he wrote it. And uh, I had nothing to do with it. I had zero. I didn't type one word of that monologue. That is all him. Um, but the, the point is, finally, she breaks through to him. And plus, he's kind of falling for her. And so she's like, you got to go home, Tyrone. And so Tyrone's like, I guess I got to I guess I got to go home and and see what this is about. And she's like, your uncle, man, he's taking over the farm. He's trying to take it, take your mama. And, and it's, it's no good up there in South Dakota. And so he grabs Zeke computer and uh, good old old man Lancaster throws him up in the truck. And they head back up to South Dakota and on the outskirts of the town, they're greeted by these like hooligans that kind of like run the town now for uh, Uncle Ben. And, uh, you know, they're like, what are you doing back here, Tyrone? And they're like, he's like, I'm here to see my mama. And he, they're like, no, you're not. You can turn right back around, come where you came from. And he's like, I came here to, you know, see my mama and grow some corn. And they're like, well, good enough for us. Let's come on in. And so they, <laughs> so they, uh, cause they've been having trouble with their corn up there. You know, like it, it, the, everything, that beautiful Valley that you saw from the house, all ruined, all blighted and dried out and arid. It's all fricked up. It's all, it's firkin. It's all firkin to hell. And, uh, so anyway, he goes back up there and uncle Benjamin's living high on the hog and thinking he's got the whole world under his boot heel. And there's mama not looking good, man. It's, it, she doesn't really have that ailment, but she's, her soul's crushed. You know, her soul is crushed. And, uh, you know, uncle Ben's like, I don't want to see you around here no more. Like you think I don't, I can't handle my own stuff. Like you come back here again, I'm going to shoot you in the head. And, uh, that's where Tyrone hatches a plan. And so <clears throat> he said, mama, I'm going to make things right. I'm sorry. I left you. And then then him, Zeke and, and, uh, pewter and Lancaster <laughs> leave. They go to a Airbnb, not far from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the, uh, you know, the farm. And, uh, so this, this is what we're going to do is uncle Jedediah is going down. I know he may be the mayor of this here, here plot of land, but Jedediah needs to die. Uh, and, I need to get revenge for my father. 
Oh, so. we changed the name. We, we've, we've, we, we, that's a typo in our script. Oh, my bad. Uncle, no, uh, Jeremiah. I like Jeremiah better. Oh, I think it was Uncle Ben, but we just, oh, Uncle ben, my bad. we got to edit. We got to edit our <laughs> yeah. script. That's right. We, this, this was between edits. This is between drafts of the script. Yeah, sorry. my bad. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Yeah, I had wrote Uncle Ben and he had wrote Uncle, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're back, back to it. So, yeah, Uncle, Uncle Jedediah. Needs to needs to die because because I because we thought of that line and, and that's why we want to change yeah. back no, to jail. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll get that uh, we'll get that fixed up. So <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Well, first, well, may I propose uh, a recipe? As here I am, the mastermind of this group. Uh, sure, go ahead, Pewter. <laughs> <laughs> so Pewter, you know, he he develops this plan of first. Firstly, he's like, do you see all them crickets? Them crickets, you're not gonna not gonna be able to grow nothing with all them crickets around here. Firstly, so we're gonna get that 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 fixed up real square, real quick, and then we can deal with with Uncle Jet Dia. And Tyrone's like, yeah, that is a great plan, Zeke. Thank you. And then so, so uh, that's Peter. Yeah, that was Peter. Zeke just goes, uh, oh yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. That's that's all Zeke ever says. <laughs> so so Tyrone, he's like. Thank you. Yeah, that that is what we're gonna do after we take care of Uncle Jedediah, because that is, you know, my dad told me when I was a young boy that all of this land <laughs> was gonna be for the people, and uh, that's what we need to do. So Uncle Jedediah, we I need to prove that he murdered my father, and I think I think I because I, I saw the uh, the harvester mm -hmm. that hasn't been running in twenty years. It because it broke on it on the body of his father. Yeah, it, it destroyed it. Yeah, so we just we just need to get a detective up here, just so we can prove. And good old man Lancaster's like, I know a detective or two. I used to run with them types. I, you know, revealed he used to be a U.S. marshal, and then he just owned a gas station. So he calls somebody up. They come up. They uh, check out the you know sure sure as hell they get a DNA sample and you know from old matted blood on the on the old harvester and they're like sure sure as shit uh, this is uh, this is old this is old Tyrone's dad's blood <laughs> that's what it says on the police report <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Just say something they, different. this is uh, this is uh, this is this is Tyrone Senior's blood uh, for sure and. Uh, they um they like we got him red handed and so they go up there with the sheriff and uh uncle uncle Jedediah knows he's had it so all his hooligans and him it's a big shootout it's a big fight fist fight fist to cuffs and uh essentially um there's this crazy scene where uh they're about to get uh Jedediah's got um Tyrone he's strangling him and he's reaching for something anything anything you can get anything you can get and he grabs a cob of corn and he shoves it in Jedediah's mouth and does the old punch a Rooney right in the, the thing and just chokes him out. And he's choking and choking and he backs up and he backs up and he backs up in that big view of the valley and he goes over the cliff and Uncle Jedediah in self defense is defeated. Yep. And uh, so Tyrone wins the day, wins back the farm under Zeke's guidance. <laughs> all them crickets are exterminated and uh, Jedediah or uh, um, uh, Tyrone. And Alan, they get together and they have a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, old mama, she's good. Lancaster's new sheriff in town. He he runs the whole place. And there's just corn maize for days all throughout the land. Yep. That, yeah, that's <laughs> it. What are we going to call this film? Got to be maize for days. <laughs> maize for days? I think it's got to be maize for days. <laughs> maize for days. <laughs> uh, so that's our movie, man. That's our movie, Maze for Days. I don't know, fellas. I think this one has to go back to the drawing board, and uh, we need a sequel at least before I can accept this. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, we, we can build a, you out a franchise. We got some edits we got to do. The whole yeah. Jedi Benjamin thing that's got to get rebuffed and everything. I'll say we'll <laughs> go back and forth on the idea. All right, all right. I think I think we can handle that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Don't be a hero, mate. You look after your mates, and your mates will always look after you. Yeah. Cheers. All right, we are going down to the land down under. We're doing our Australian news segment where we check in with all of our friends down in the Aussie nation. This is a segment that we love and hold dear to our hearts. This week on Aussie News, meteorite crash staged at Tasmanian school to promote science causes alarm from some 
Uh, this was hysterical, man. To promote like science and ed- and STEM programs and to like participate in your school science fair this year, they staged a meteorite crash in a school parking lot. <laughs> they had people in like uh all the all the suits, all the um uh, radioactive suits, and like there's a big rock and there's steam coming out and people who had no idea but like lived in the town thought this really happened yeah. <laughs> like all the parents are like oh this is great the kids are so engaged they love what's going on and from certain angles you you can't see things like and so people thought a meteorite had really almost just obliterated a school of like eight-year-olds <laughs> oh, the real war of the world yeah real <laughs> world of the worlds but i mean they even like destroyed the asphalt and everything and just like wow. really like put everything in there i mean i give these people credit like, the, like australia's so cool man <laughs> you got stuff falling out of the sky you got spacex stuff falling into farms and they're taking pictures and making yard art with it and then you got schools that are kind of making stuff fall out of the sky <laughs> Um, that's awesome, but dude, they got computers and test tubes and everything. And the kids just all about it. They had the police out there meeting the kids. And I mean, it, I, I want to go to this. I want to do this. Like I want to somebody do an asteroid landing for me. Like that's what I want. Yeah. That's, that's passion and dedication. You have Thor showing up and Loki <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean the guy who built the Roman fort, like Australians yeah. just love to commit. That's yeah. what I found. They yeah. love to commit. I want to know what happened to the guy who, who drove by and saw it and was like, oh, Peter. (laughs) (laughs) That's not an Aussie accent. Like, oh, Peter. (laughs) They got got an asteroid that just hit and like (laughs) drives off. Like, what is he doing? He didn't stop to check what it was. He just said, now he told 20 friends and all those people told 20 friends. And pretty soon (laughs) it's like, asteroid came down over at school today and (laughs) must be the truth. Yeah. Gotta be. (laughs) I mean, that just goes to show you in life, you know, when you know, you know, and when you don't know, you just tell everyone something, and as, as long, if you believe it enough, they'll believe it too, and then they'll tell two friends, and so on, and so forth. Because when when people in life put in enough effort to to truly commit to something, to to make the experience better for everyone, that is a truly special thing. And and if you if you can't stomach that once a week. Then are you even living? Are you are you feeling like you can just joyride through the entirety of life? Uh, because you can't. That's not sustainable. That that is not something that you can do. It might seem easy. It might seem fun. It might seem cool to do at the time, but it's not. It's gonna come up in the rear and it's gonna bite you in the keister. That's right. You know the uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles are gonna 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 cowabunga all over you. And you think you can just go to Vegas and, and make it cool? No, it's not gonna be cool. Just like, just like the crocodile hunter getting killed. That's not cool. And may he rest in peace. Just as the Egyptian pharaohs forever rest in peace on on their uh, on their alien planet. Woo, woo. Here we come into the recommendation station part of our show where we recommend to you guys uh, something like a book, a movie, a food, uh, music, anything, uh, a lifestyle. Uh, here's one of my favorite types of recommendations. Gas station food <laughs> that you guys love so much. No, but this one's this one's super legit. Sheets. Yeah. I don't know how much you guys enjoy sheets. No, uh, I, I I got linked up. My my buddy linked me up on the sheets, and last year it's a problem. It's great. It's too easy to get chicken fingers. I should just go to the store and buy a bag. But yeah, but sheets. I'm a, I'm a get go kind of guy. Oh. oh, he's missing out. <laughs> made to order food, made to order MTO is coming at you. Made to order. Yeah, so you you punch it in on the little screen or do it on the app. He's gonna have that thing ready in five minutes. It's nice. uh, they got they got the meal deals. I'm getting I'm getting a grilled chicken sandwich, fries, and a drink for five bucks. Nice. That's, you get anything for five bucks anymore. And but this you can. Don't don't tell sheets, but I would probably buy it if it was still six bucks. Oh, whoa. <laughs> but uh, let's just let's just keep Lukey getting the upper hand on this one. <laughs> uh, no sheets. Uh, that's my jam. I probably go there at least two times a week. Sometimes six times a week. 
it's is that for real? Yeah, for real. Wow. For real, real. A little snacky, a little sneaky well, snack. That's my, that's my that's my lunch. It's because I can I can take a piss. I can <laughs> I can get a giant forty four ounce uh, unsweetened iced tea, and I don't have to ask for it because I just do it fill it myself. And uh, you know I get a chicken sandwich, uh, some fries and some 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 wieners in my mouth, and I am good to go. <laughs> Is that in the bathroom or not in the bathroom that you eat the wieners? After. After. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. No, hey, Lancaster. Hey, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that you are happy. That's all that matters. Try it. Whatever makes you happy. Try I'm telling you. It's, um, it's beyond get-go. I've had it. The pretzel was okay. The stuffed pretzel. But yeah, I get the grilled chicken gotta sandwich. Got to get the grilled chicken sandwich. <laughs> or the burger. Or the made-to-order burgers. Made-to-order burgers. Great. I'm down. I'm down to give it a try. I'm down to try everything at least once. Wieners in my mouth. I'm down to try that. Yeah, fifty cents. Um, a, if you get two two wieners, there it's only a buck. Perfect. Cheap, <laughs> cheap. I like cheap. Yeah. Uh, guys, great show. It was fun. A lot, a lot in there. Um, a lot of cool stuff to 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 talk about. And I know you'll carry on, guys. And though you're broken and defeated. Your weary widow marches on. Oh, yeah. We'll carry on. But I want to thank you guys for being out there, listening in, watching. I want to thank DJ back and forth for being here and commanding the board. Hey, fellas. It's always a great time here at the Velocity Cast podcast. Glad to have you, have, glad to have, you have you here. And uh, also glad to get another one of the books. It's a great journey that we're on. We appreciate you walking with us on it. Please let us know what you think, what you like, what you don't like. Happy to have a debate with you, um, whether it's about food allergies or about the show or segments on the show, whatever it is. Let's uh, let's dialogue. Let's dialogue. Anyway, had a good one. Hope you're having a good one. This is Nick signing off. And this is Luke signing off. Thank you guys all for being here. Email us at VelocityCastPodcast at gmail.com if you got something big you want to send us or just uh, reply to YouTube on one of the uh, episodes and uh, we can dive into that. Uh, Thank you guys all once again. And like we always say, if you're eating something that you're allergic to, just keep eating it because you'll either become immune or you'll be dead. So you don't have to worry. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Interact with us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or on Facebook and YouTube at Velocity Chaos Podcast. We are grateful for your time and hope you enjoyed it here. Please tell a friend and thank you once again.